हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल मेटोलॉजिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो विद द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ फिजिकल मेटोलॉजी कॉन्सेप्ट्स टुडे वी विल सी अबाउट ग्रीन ग्रोथ आफ्टर रिकवरी रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन दिस इज द थर्ड स्टेप सो ग्रीन ग्रोथ इज द इंक्रीज इन द एवरेज ग्रीन साइज फॉलोइंग रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन ओके नाउ द ग्रीन साइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द ग्रीन साइज distribution does not change during normal grain growth okay so uh, there are basically two kinds of uh, grain growth one is normal grain growth and one is abnormal grain growth so in case of normal grain growth this grain size distribution does not change this means uh, whichever grain is at is uh, own place that will be grow there only that will not change the position okay or uh, in case of abnormal grain growth abnormal grain growth in this case the grain size distribution changes radially this means maybe that uh, some of very large grains may be present along with the fine grains so this is how here uh, some of the very large grains and some of the very fine grains they will come together so this case belongs to the abnormal grain growth and uh, in case of this uh, normal grain growth the grain size distribution will not change okay so this is the difference between uh, normal grain growth and abnormal grain growth normal grain growth and abnormal grain growth okay so here one example so this is about the normal grain growth example okay so this example shows that the when the average grain size increases like this is the grain size for any metallic system just consider this is the grain size okay this is the uniform size okay so whenever the average grain size increases suppose this grain size is increasing so it will increase this side okay so radially it will increase so this will change its own size and collapse and collisions with the neighbor grain okay so it will increase its size suppose this grain size becomes now this much of big so whenever the grain average grain size increases the grain boundary area per unit volume of the metal decreases okay with the corresponding decrease in the grain boundary energy per unit volume okay so this statement i will mention here when the average grain size increase the grain boundary area per unit volume of the metal decreases with the corresponding decrease in green boundary energy per unit volume okay so this uh, green boundary uh, energy 
per unit volume this provides the driving force for grain growth okay so this is the fundamental question can be asked in any exam or interview that what is the driving force for grain growth so the driving force for grain growth is the decrease in grain boundary energy per unit volume okay so i'll just mention here decrease in grain boundary energy per unit volume is the driving force for grain growth okay so next yeah one more point is here like uh, the this provides the driving force for grain growth which is about an order of magnitude smaller than the uh, that for the recrystallization okay so the driving force for recrystallization hmm, is little bit magnitude uh, high, higher than the driving force for grain growth okay so just mark this point here next the solute drag effect solute drag effect and the pinning action of second phase particle pinning action of second phase particle so these two effects which retards the movement of migrating boundaries during grain growth as well so thus aluminium like uh, one example is here like aluminium killed steel 10 to remain fine grained this is 10 to remain always fine grained during austenitization in the presence of aluminium oxide because these particles will retard the grain growth okay will prevent or we can say retard retard grain growth okay aluminium maybe plus some nitrite particle also okay so now we will see the effect on mechanical properties of uh, cold work recovery recrystallization and grain growth process so in this figure we can see clearly about the properties okay so i have mentioned here three properties 1 2 and 3 i will explain one by one and the microstructure for the cold work and uh, recovery recrystallization and grain growth so we can see here that uh, the more is the cold work so the first is for hardness this curve is for hardness okay and this curve is for tensile strength and this curve is for ductility so we can see as the percentage of cold work increases hardness increases see this one okay and uh, about tensile strength it also increases but as the percentage of cold work increases the ductility will decrease okay see this value is decreasing as soon as we will enter into the recovery region so their hardness and uh, tensile strength are almost uh, constant or we can say little bit uh, reduction in these properties only but there is a significant amount of uh, ductility will be restored this section okay so next if we will reach to the re recrystallization region in the third region so there we can see that the hardness and tensile strength will decrease a significant amount and uh, restoration of the ductility will happen also in a significant amount so these uh, ductility are improving and hardness and 
tensile strength are deteriorating a bit okay so and in case of grain growth also the ductility will not affect that much that will be the almost uh, constant curve but in case of uh, uh, hardness and tensile strength after crossing the recrystallization region they will also uh, not be affected that much but still are, are a little bit down in comparison to the percentage cold work or recovery region okay so this is how the hardness and tensile strength and ductility of a material will be affected with respect to the percentage cold work recovery recrystallization and grain growth now we will see the microstructure for <laughs> for all four regions so initially in case of percentage cold work the uh, microstructure of any metal is like these grains are like this okay so in case of recovery as we know that here annihilation of uh, some uh, defects like uh, uh, point defects like vacancies and rearrangement of the dislocations will happen in case of recovery so there will be the polygonization process as we have seen in the some last video so this is called polygonization process so that will happen in this region and uh, so all the uh, dislocations are arranged in a way so that um, that will make a tilt boundary and uh, point defect will be annihilated and some of the point defect will be still existing in the recovery case so after recovery recrystallization so in case of recrystallization new strain free grains will new strain free grains will form so here we can see there is smaller grain size so there is a new strain free grains are forming and this is the microstructure for the recrystallization case and this is the transition zone between recrystallization to grain growth so here we can see the grains are slightly increasing in their size like here we can see the more higher like uh, higher grain size or the size of the grain is bigger than the uh, previous situation okay so this is how the grain growth happens so here this first region we can see that this is the normal grain growth region and uh, somewhere here if we will uh, just see that suppose this grain i will make it for you this bigger this this grain is like this and here are the smaller smaller grain so this region will be called the abnormal grain growth okay so this is all about the grain growth so kindly like share subscribe our youtube channel and uh, thank you